a little promise about it. People were getting a little bit excited. There was a festival in the air. Families were coming home, looking forward to an exciting meal, but with all those intentions and niggles that happen just beneath the surface. All the normal focus of an ordinary working day. But in a month, all that ordinary stuff, there was one person walking what looked like an ordinary walk to an ordinary day. briefly I want to share with you three ways in which the cross is used in our everyday lives that actually takes us to the heart of the cross of Jesus and its significance for us. If you send a text, if you send an email, if you send a letter and it's a message of love that you want to convey, you might use at the end of that text or email or letter with love and you will add to it a cross or maybe two or three crosses depending how much love you want to express to that person as it were and that's the first thing about the cross of Jesus it is the ultimate expression of God's love the most well-known verse probably in the New Testament is St John chapter 3 verse 16 that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. When there was some correspondence about what's wrong with the world, and all sorts of people wrote long letters about what's wrong with the world, and he said, Dear Sir, I am your sincerely G. K. Chesterton. And he got it right. There is within each of us that tendency to not be the people that we want to be or God wants us to be. The Bible calls it sin, it's not exactly a popular word, it never was. And the heart of sin isn't stuff that we do or say or even fail to do, it's the letter I in the middle of that word. I put it myself first. And the cross comes and acknowledges that yes, we've got it wrong and we can't save ourselves. What we just sung in our first hymn, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and lock it in. And finally, what is happening on May the 7th? The general election. Some of you, if you weren't at a Monday Thursday service, may have been watching the debate between seven of our political leaders last night. I just caught the tail end of it. I thought I was watching Lucas Link when, the, <laughs> when I saw the kind of lectern as it were, behind which they were standing. Welcome back, Anne Robinson. All this <laughs> but on May the 7th, please do vote. It is part of our Christian responsibilities to exercise that gift we have in a democracy. Please do vote. And how do we vote? We place a cross against the candidate of our choice. It's about a decision that we have to make. And many of us standing here at the foot of the cross have made that decision in response to God's call to us in Jesus. To follow him, to give our lives to him, to seek to live for him in all that we are and all that we do. But today comes as a further reminder to renew that commitment to walk the way of the cross which sometimes is costly because it's not the way that most people go. But as Steve said at the very beginning, what started as an ordinary day, that first Good Friday, the streets of Jerusalem and the hill of Calvary 
became a day that changed the world forever.